Okay, y'all, we are here today to see if we can figure out how to download JDBoost T images data and open them and mess around with them on our computer. Keeping in mind that I have not used this software since I was an undergrad in college, which was so long ago, and I've never downloaded anything from the archive. So yeah, I did not plan this. This was kind of spur of the moment. So we'll see how it goes. Hmm. Also, I apologize in advance for any background noise. I live in a city, it's, there's always background noise. Also, I will try my best to not talk while I'm typing because I do have a pretty clackety mechanical keyboard here and my microphone is right next to it. So that could be bad. Okay, so first things first, we need the DS9 software. Again, not this DS9, this DS9. So let's go ahead and go to Google. Here it is, download. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm on my Windows computer today. I use Linux for, well, I used Linux when I was in grad school, I guess I don't use it anymore. <laughs> all right, hopefully this is all going to be very self-explanatory because <laughs> again, I don't know what I'm doing here. We'll go ahead and open this baby up. Okay, so yeah, this is like really old school software. So it is, there's not really a lot of frills and bells as far as the interface goes. I'm having so many flashbacks to being an undergrad and doing this. I used DS9 to, um, we took images. So we had like a telescope on campus. We had this little observatory and we had an observational astrophysics class we had to do. And so we would go out and we'd take this data from this telescope, you know, import it into DS9. And what I ended up doing for my capstone project, my senior project, was we observed the moons of Jupiter over time and plotted their positions and you get these nice sine waves and you can actually use that to determine the mass of Jupiter, uh, which I did. And I actually found something consistent with uh, previous results. <laughs> but always a pain getting anything to do what you want it to do in DS9, for me. I'm sure people that use it more frequently don't have as many problems. Okay, so now we have the software we need. Let's get the data. So I mentioned this was on MASS. It's the Mikulski Archive for Space Telescopes. It's not just JWST data. They have Hubble data, test data, I think Kepler data, lots of data. Cool. Okay, so let's go to web. Um, no, we don't. We want to actually go to the archive. Here we go. We'll go into the MAST portal, which I believe is where we can search for the data we want. Which one should we do? Let's do the Carina Nebula one. NGC 3324 is what we're going to be looking for here. Okay, so we're specifically looking for JWST, T, so I'm pretty sure that's fine. Y'all, you're really getting this just as it comes here because I don't know what I'm doing. All right, file name? Would it be in the file name? No, I'm going to say observation ID. Nope, that didn't work either. Basic search, let's do basic search. By object name. Let's enter this. Okay, we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere here. Now we can go to mission and let's select your diversity. I can't believe this is actually working. Oh, okay. Whew. Getting serious. I wanna do near cam. We can see the filters they used. That's good. We know that the filters is what we want. Okay, so just gonna download these data products. I'm just gonna do the near cam ones. Okay, we got six sets of data files downloading. Yeah, these are these are kind of big files. Ooh, you could have I could have just added all of these to the download basket and downloaded them together. We're in too deep now. I'm gonna get a snack. All right, a snack and some water. You gotta stay hydrated. All right, now that we have our JWST data, or at least some of it, <laughs> let's go ahead and open it up. Let's look at the 090 and let's zoom. Oh, there's a fit, ah, zoom fit. Okay, so no, it's not broken. You might be wondering why can't we really see anything except for like a couple tiny, tiny specks. So that is because most of the details of the data are kind of in the lower photon counts. So you'll have a couple sources like those nearer stars that are very, very bright and they will collect the majority of the photons. And those are the ones showing up here as little dots. Everything else is kind of smooshed down in the other end of the range. So in order to get a better look at this, we want to change how um, it's being scaled. So I think right now it's linearly scaled, but we change it to log, ha! Now you start to think, things come out because all of that uh, detail was being hidden in those kind of low photon counts. So by changing it into a log view, we get a much, uh, much more balanced view of the data. Cool. So we can export this right now as a black and white image, or we can color it. Let's say we make this one blue if we wanted to kind of do similar to what NASA did and then export it. But I think there's actually a way to do the color stuff in DS9. Go back to gray. 
color. No, that was color scale. I don't know what I'm doing. Frame? New, new frame RGB. Okay, I think I think this is it. Current. So I want to make the current blue. Wait, now there's nothing here. <laughs> okay, so maybe I want to make a green one. That's green! See, so this one's still in black and white though. It's very frustrating. I'm just Okay, I'm just gonna start over. <laughs> Let's just start over. Okay, how about I open as slice? How about I start doing new frame? New frame RGB. I want it to be red. Open as slice, the one I want to be red. And I want to zoom fit. And I want to log scale. Okay, maybe. Maybe this is working. Let's now, let's try new, new frame. And make this one green. Open as slice. The one I want to be. <laughs> I just gotta relax for a month for a month. <laughs> yes, I am stressed. <laughs> With 200 W, that's green. Okay, frame. New frame RGB, we want this one to be blue. File, open as slice. The one we want to be blue, which is 090 W. Now I have the three slices, I think, but how <laughs> do I make it into an image? Oh, it's just giving me the blue one. <laughs> I want all of them to get put together. Okay, I think maybe opening as slice was the mistake. We're gonna start over again. I wonder how much I'm going to edit all of this out because this is going to be horrible to watch. <laughs> but hopefully it will give you confidence that we don't know what the fuck we're doing. We're learning, it's fine. I'm still lost though. Let's go back to the user's manual. Okay, so I wanna lock. I wanna view my little <clears throat> RGB window here. Lock. I just want I just want these to go together. I swear I'm doing exactly what it says. Okay, frame, new frame RGB, red is selected, file, open. I mean, they're all selected as, as view. So while I am tempted to quit, but now that I started, I really wanna at least get something done. I am literally gonna cry. I'm so frustrated right now. Okay, we're gonna do a new RGB frame, file, open. We're just gonna go ahead and lock the scale. Now we're gonna hit green, file, open, green. Okay, now we're gonna do blue, file, open, blue. Now I've locked the scale here, so hopefully when I change one, it will change all of them. There we go, we're starting to get a little bit of the color image. So let's zoom fit. We're starting to see the color come out. Obviously there is uh, <laughs> a lot that could be done with this to make it look better. Um, but this is the very, very basic idea. This is just using the wide band filters. So there's none of the narrow band filters in here. And I really haven't done any tweaking of the filters, the colors or anything. But you're starting to see like with the dust, you're starting to see that color come out. I think it's pretty cool. We can play around with the scale. So right now I just have it set min max, but like, Okay, so now I sent it to 99.5% um, and you can already see, like, look how pretty this is starting to look. I mean, this was like two seconds, right? You can also, like, adjust the scale yourself. Um, so you, if you open up scale parameters, you'll see this histogram of kind of the intensity of each pixel. There's a green and a red line. So you can move this red line out, so like, or green line. So this is the max and then this is the min, the red line. So like as you move it around, you can kind of see how it gives you different. So if you have it, you know, all the way down, it's just gonna blank out your image. So you're gonna maybe set it there. And then let's move this green line around until we kind of like how it looks. I like that, I like that. That looks nice, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so obviously this is like the most basic, basic colorizing ever, but it does exist. Sorry, I got distracted by how pretty this is. That's just a very, very quick uh, learn with me <laughs> as I had to recall how to do this. Um, DS9, I don't think is the most friendly, user-friendly software, but as you get used to it, it's a little bit easier. You can also do things from the command line with DS9, um, which can be easier. And of course you don't have to use DS9 necessarily. We could also do it the other way around. So let's say we wanna make the 090 filter our red. We'll keep the 200 as the green, and we'll use the 444 as the blue. So let's go ahead and lock this um, scaling, and let's try the 99.5 again. 
Ooh, I kind of like it. <laughs> Let's play around with the scale here. That's pretty. <laughs> Makes me think of Grover, like the Muppet Grover. <laughs> Okay, so that was like not even a tutorial. That was just so let's figure this out together. But hopefully that uh, like seeing it like that helped you understand a little bit better how these colorized images get made. And obviously people put a lot more time and effort into it than I just did. And they use other filters and stuff. But that was kind of fun and very frustrating, but fun. <laughs> well, that's it. Thank you guys for joining me and I'll see you again next time. Bye.